I'm Kathy Neptune and welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to share with you tips, tools, and recipes to make your time in the kitchen fun, fast, and fabulous. And thank you to everybody for all your emails and your ideas. And I'm taking some of those ideas and I'm going to run with it. We're going to go a little continental here, if you will, or at least um, a different take on the international scene. And we're going to do shawarma. And uh, along with that, the different spices, I want you to try different spices. You know how I love my spices. So I'm going to be walking you through some of these that you can buy in a bottle, in a jar, or you can make your own. So you've got a great, great um, venue here to select your favorites along the way and, and try something a little different. And we're going to do a grilled eggplant. And we're doing an indoor grill because the weather just isn't working with us here. And it's always good to have an option indoors because of weather and so forth. So we're going to grill the eggplant and we're going to do a wonderful marinated feta cheese topping with a lot of herbs. And when I say spices, I don't mean spicy, but a lot of flavor. That's how I translate spicy. And then we're going to do a chicken shawarma, which is usually done on a spit in a triangular shape. But we're doing it with ground chicken tonight, and we're going to do it on skewers. So some info on that, and we're going to do a tzatziki sauce with it. And then we're going to do a wonderful, refreshing fresh fruit salad with some yogurt and some uh, lime. So I think there's something here for everybody. And right here, I want to show you what I've done already. I took some eggplant and I sliced them about an inch thick and I salted them and let them set. I salted both sides and I let them set for about 10 minutes and that draws all the salt out of them. And I took a paper towel and I set them. You can see how the moisture has leached out of the bottom and the top of these. I also took the um, a paper towel and, and dab the top of them and take a lot of the moisture out of them and you want to do that so they'll grill really really well and then I'm going to take these over to my grill pan on my stove and put them oil side down and this will add a lot of flavor and we just want to put grill marks and a char on these so you want to kind of keep an eye on them and I don't have the grill turned up too high, otherwise you have a lot of smoke. But you can let these grill. And we don't need salt on these, of course, because we already salted them. So excuse my back while I put these on. And this is just one whole eggplant, a regular eggplant. And we're going to serve this at room temperature. And then do that and just kind of keep an eye on those and I can brush them quickly with a little more oil on the back. And this is just a plain good quality olive oil. Nothing in them. Now let's take a look and see. Make sure they're not cooking. You can see already that they're starting to get some grill marks on them. So it doesn't take very long. So we'll just turn those down and let them go. And we're going to prepare our sauce to go with this. And in here, oh, and you know what else I love? Grilled lemons. And I also brush these with a little bit of olive oil as well. You get so much good juice when they char on the olive oil, uh, on the lemons rather. It's really, really a good technique. Now in this pan, I've roasted or kind of like poached. I'm going to call it poached. There's about two tablespoons of a good olive oil and some crushed uh, or pressed garlic. Or you could grate the garlic, but it's very finely done. And I barely warm up the olive oil. Now what you don't want to do, you can see it's not browned at all. It's just as light a color as you can get. And the warm olive oil uh, just poaches the garlic so you have this wonderful infused garlic olive oil. And then you let it cool down. And I'm going to add to that, oh I also added a grating of lemon peel, probably half a teaspoon. 
and I'm going to use what they call za'atar, and I'm going to show you how it's spelled. Okay, and it's a Middle East spice. And we're going to do about a couple of shakes, not even a teaspoon, I'd say half a teaspoon. And let me tell you what's in za'atar. It's so much easier to buy it already mixed, but it the ingredients are sumac, which is this, and sumac is, the way I can describe it, is lemon and thyme. It's a great mixture. It's very light, not as strong as thyme. But if you don't have sumac, just add a little bit of uh, either uh, dry thyme or fresh thyme. And again, some lemon zest. It also has Turkish oregano, which, I mean, there's all kinds of oreganos, like Mexican oregano or any kind of dried oregano. Spanish thyme, so you can see we're going all over the place with this, or regular thyme. Roasted sesame seeds, that gives it a nice texture, and sea salt. So um, you can make that whole mixture yourself, add a teaspoon of each and put it in a jar and keep it handy. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this sumac, and this is so lemony and fresh. And you can probably send away for this, so there's herb companies that have this and it's got a little bit of a color like paprika wood. So we're going to add that. And then I'm going to add, let's see, a little bit, I like uh, a balsamic vinegar. And this is a white balsamic with, a, it has a little bit of lemon in it. So probably a slight teaspoon of balsamic vinegar and I'm going to check real quick to see how our eggplant is doing. The lemons look pretty good. Oh yeah, see that's what you want. See how it's getting nice and toasty and bubbling up. You could do this ahead of time because we're going to serve it at room temperature. And the lemons, look at how nice and brown the lemons are getting, nice and dark. So we're going to keep an eye on those. So in here, I'm going to add a little bit of, for color, some chives or green onions. The more flavors you can add, the better. And then I have about, I'd say, two-thirds cup of cubed feta cheese. I'm going to pour this mixture all over the feta. Now you notice we didn't add any salt and you probably have figured out the feta cheese is so salty that you don't need a lot more salt to this. So I'm just going to toss this lightly and let it set for a few minutes and that's going to be our topping for our roasted or grilled eggplant. Doesn't that look good? Okay, so we're going to set that aside. And move this over here. And next, we're going to do our chicken shawarma. I'm going to get this, I always keep this refrigerated. We have some beautiful ground chicken. And to this, we're going to add some more, use more of our blend. And this here is a chicken shawarma mix. Now, I wrote down what is in chicken shawarma. So I could remember it and let you know. You can, I bought this in a jar or you can mix your own. And what chicken shawarma is made of is za'atar. You remember what was in our za'atar. And you add a teaspoon of each, a teaspoon of that za'atar, a teaspoon of the sumac, 
a teaspoon of regular oregano and thyme, and uh, some toasted sesame seeds and some sea salt. And that is going to be your shawarma mix. Also, if you want to add, uh, make it a little stronger, it has cumin, a teaspoon each add cumin, paprika, and cayenne, and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. So there's quite a lot of com uh, complex flavors in this, but it's what makes shawarma a shawarma. And you can smell the cinnamon and the spices in there. So we're gonna start out with a pound of ground chicken. And we're gonna get, add just a little bit, I'd say half a teaspoon of our shawarma mix or all those ingredients. Again, to reflect the flavors that we're using in our other marinated feta, a little bit of sumac. Not a lot, because these flavors are very, very strong. <clears throat> or remember, you can just do lemon and thyme. A little bit of the za'atar, which is another blend. It's so much easier to buy these and have fun with them. This uh, za'atar, I love on vegetables. And sometimes I just do Syrian bread with a little olive oil and I put the sumac and the za'atar on top. It is phenomenal. It is so great when you're having drinks and you serve that to your company. It is outstanding. And everybody wants to know what the flavor is because it's unique and it's different. So we're going to do uh, some salt, of course, because ground chicken is very bland. So to a pound, we're going to add a teaspoon of salt. And then what would anything be without garlic? So we're going to add, let me get a nice big clove of garlic. And my garlic press. So we're going to have garlic in everything, just to warn you, because this is going to be not spicy, but let's call it flavorful because that's what it's all about. And let's do two because we can. It's not date night tonight. All about the garlic. <laughs> get in there. Don't forget if you want to know where to get these tools. I don't even have to peel my garlic because this garlic press does all the work for me and it's pretty nice. So we'll put that in, and then I'm going to add, let me empty this out, I'm going to check on our eggplant, excuse me a minute, oh that's looking really good, and I'm going to take off our lemons. I would say those are charred. Look at our beautiful lemons. Those are going to be great. I'm going to leave those on just, I like them really, really charred. So we've got our garlic in there, our lemon zest, and we're just going to mix that up. <clears throat> and you know what? I'm going to put on my gloves because I'm going to wrap these around some skewers. And I've already, I'll show you what I did with the skewers here. I'm going to talk about skewers while I mix these up. Take a look at these skewers and see if you notice something about these skewers. Have you ever done skewered vegetables and you put them on the grill and they spin around? That's because you have round skewers. These skewers are flat. So we're going to shape this mixture around the skewers and same with your vegetables. They're not going to spin around. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to this too. Just a, just a touch so that it doesn't get dry. So I've also sprayed those, the skewers, with some uh, nonstick spray so that they don't... Uh, stick when we take them off. Now there's, this is kind of a spin on something called kofta that is a traditional dish that they make with ground lamb. 
and I thought not everybody's crazy about lamb but you certainly could and they do it they skewer it as well but they do it with lamb so I thought this might be a good thing and you just take and skewer this around the meat goes around like so and you want to be very it's it's very fragile at this point so you kind of form it like that and I'm going to take these off and put them in this beautiful dish so we can put those right on the grill And I love this recipe because you can double and triple it. And uh, it's great on leftovers. You can put these in pita bread and they make wonderful little sandwiches. And I'm going to leave that on so we can put our skewers right on top. And then as the meat cooks, it's going to kind of solidify. And you can certainly do these in little patties if you wanted to or meatballs. But I thought it'd be kind of fun to do it like a skewer. You can see how delicate the meat is. And because I oiled the grill really well, and then I put them down here. And you could chill them. It helps a little bit. But this meat is pretty darn cold. I think we should have just enough. Or four, you can make them bigger or smaller. You know what's fun too? Sometimes they use the little small mini pita breads, and you can make small patties and put them on the little mini mini Syrian breads, and they make wonderful little salads. So there's not much to it. I just thought they looked a little more traditional if we did them this way, like a kofta. And of course, they're not going to shrink up too much because there's not a lot of fat in chicken, but adding that little bit of olive oil really helps. So I'm going to put that on there. And we got them pretty even, didn't we? They're pretty good. And then as a final touch, because like I said, it's going to, they're a little dry. Just going to brush them with the olive oil and because we're using this on raw meat of course you don't want to save this olive oil you want to discard it afterwards and I wanted to mention to make it really clear the sumac that I talked about in this pouch it's not the local sumac that you can go out and pick this is a special herbal sumac it's not like the other sumac is like poison sumac you don't want that so go to a specialty shop or look online and find it online and source it out. Um, it's a great different spice to have. Your family will love it. So I'm going to get these on the grill. You can hear them sizzle. That's just what you want. And I'm putting them oil side down. And I'm just going to brush a little bit of olive oil on the other side. And that looks pretty good. And when we come back, I'm going to show you how to make a tzatziki sauce to go on top. So we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. Check out the skewers. Our shawarma chicken skewers. They smell so fragrant. You can't kind of think about what kind of fragrance comes out. You smell the cinnamon, the cloves, the uh, garlic is in there. All the spices that are going to make this unique. And look at how moist and tender they're going to be. And great grill marks. Certainly do that on the grill. The other thing I meant to mention about, um, you could certainly use wooden skewers and soak them and put them on the grill and they usually burn from each end. And the other thing with the wooden skewers, I like using metal. Remember, flat metal skewers, because the metal conducts the heat where the wooden one, wooden ones don't. So it's like it does double duty, if you will. That the um, 
the core of whatever you're skewering, especially when you're doing things like this, you want that heat to transfer right to the center core, and that's another benefit to using metal skewers. So it's, it doesn't seem like much. You never knew there was that much to know about skewers, but I went to skewer school, the SS. And that's what I learned, and it doesn't make a difference, and that's a good trivia question. Sometimes when you're doing a barbecue, have a list of trivia questions, because yeah, you learn a lot, and it's a lot of fun, and um, a simple thing like that makes a difference. So um, check out the skewers, and of course, if you, if you want resources for these tools, I can certainly help you out. Let me know. So now to go on top of our, our chicken swarmers, and we're going to serve those. I have some pita bread that we're going to warm up on the grill when those are done. And I'd say give them a good eight minutes, uh, about two to three minutes on each side and keep rotating them to make sure you don't have raw chicken because that's important. So on top of that, we're going to do a tzatziki sauce, a traditional tzatziki sauce. And the main ingredients of that is feta cheese. And it again, it adds a nice saltiness to the dish and then I've done most of this ahead of time. I shredded some cucumbers. And this is probably a half a cup on a regular box grater or whatever kind of grater you have. And I salted it. And I want you to see from that little bit of cucumber, look at all the juice that came out of there. And a lot of people ask, how come my tzatziki sauce when I make it is watery? But look at when you take the time, and it only takes about, I'd say, a half an hour. You could do this overnight, set it over a bowl. That is, it makes a huge difference in your finished product so that you won't have a watery tzatziki. And that's important because to that, we're going to add a container, and this is about five ounces of plain Greek yogurt. So how fresh is this going to taste? I'm going to add that, and that's just one container, or about half a cup or so. And then I like to add, of course, garlic is in everything in this type of cuisine. So a fresh clove of garlic. Here's another trivia question. Did you know that purple garlic is sweeter than regular garlic? And I'm not saying it's a variety, but sometimes if you have all the garlic in the bin at your grocery store, and you just want to pick out a, a nice head of garlic go for the purple because some of them are white some have a purple tinge and those tend to be a little bit sweeter so that's another good piece of trivia and you can never have too much garlic especially with cucumbers i, I just think it's so they go so well together and add that and then for a little bit of richness, it doesn't look like much. I just add like that much mayonnaise. It just probably a teaspoon just for flavor. And then dill, fresh. You could do fresh, but remember, if you have fresh, you use twice as much dill. And you really want to get the, about a good teaspoon of dry dill, or I'd say two teaspoons of fresh dill if you were going to use it. Look at this. This is going to be so good on the top of our shawarma. And then I like a little note of onion. So I always add a few, probably a good tablespoon. And what I love about these recipes, they don't have to be exact. If you like more garlic, you can put in more garlic. Um, but the, look at this, how fresh and flavorful. That's going to be on the top. And I'm going to put that in a pretty bowl. Or maybe I won't. Oh yeah, here we go. So we can serve it in here. And this keeps beautifully in the refrigerator. And this is just good served with pita bread. So none of this is difficult to do, but I'm telling you, it is delicious. So we're going to put that out. I'm going to check on our skewers and turn them over and finish those up. And um, uh, when we come back, we're going to do our wonderful, refreshing fruit dessert. We'll be right back. 
Hi, welcome back. Look at our shawarmas, how beautifully brown. And I I'm going to take some pita bread that I've cut in half and just warm them on the grill. I'm going to do two and then I'll do two more after a while. We're going to do our dessert. And you want something that's a lot of garlic and spices. You want something to really leave you with a nice clean palate to finish your dinner. So look at this beautiful selection that I've done on um, different berries. I have blueberries, kiwi, I did that for color, some cantaloupe, sliced grapes. Uh, but you could put everything or anything in here. The only thing I really don't like in here is bananas. They're too, too mushy. Um, you can do strawberries, but I love the combo the somehow melon. Make sure you put uh, any kind of melon in here because it really carries the flavors very well. And we're going to take a lime, very Persian, very Mediterranean, to add some freshness. And we're just going to grate it over the top. I love lime. We could also grill this if you didn't want to do a lemon. A nice change up would be grilled limes. And I made a nice big bowl because I have this for breakfast. I love this for breakfast. So just about the whole zest from one whole lime. And then I'm going to take my handy little juicer, slice this in half. And don't forget, if you don't get a lot of juice from your lemons or limes, you can always put them in the microwave for about 30 seconds and it adds to being, adds the juice factor. And then cut side down in here and juice the lime. Oh, get you work out on this and press it all the way down and it's going to be just enough juice to go over the top and these are simple ingredients but it's so refreshing you do this at night you barbecue and are grilling outside you have a nice drink you sit and watch in the sunset and you serve this in the evening. This is a great evening dessert. And then, this is just vegetable oil. Now this sounds odd, but it's going to carry all of these flavors throughout and kind of keep it fresh. So about a, I'd say a teaspoon of vegetable oil. And then honey. This is another thing I love. This is wildflower honey. And I like wildflower because it's a little bit stronger and it will hold up well. But you can use a blossom honey and about a tablespoon of that. Not a lot because the fruit is very fresh as well. Now, excuse me a minute. I'm just going to turn over our pita breads. And I'm going to turn this off. And we're going to stir. Oh, those look amazing. And then we're just going to toss this lightly just to make sure everything's coated. And the lime juice is going to break down all the honey. And the lime juice is going to distribute it all over. And that little bit of oil, I think it kind of preserves the fruits so they don't dry out if you leave these in the refrigerator and serve it. I, I suggest making a big batch because this is so refreshing. Just toss in the coat and you can put the whole thing in the refrigerator, but I'm going to plate this up into my little mini trifle bowls. I couldn't resist them. They just show everything so beautifully. You can see through all the different fruits. And I just love the kiwi in here. It's so unusual, I think, to have kiwi in a fruit bowl. And when you have pretty dishes, why not make it look special? I'm going to put a big kiwi on the top. And I'm going to top this because we have kind of this theme going on with some yogurt. This is a vanilla, sugar-free vanilla yogurt. Just on top. 
And if the weather was warmer and I had, you know, me and my herb garden, if I had any lime mint or ginger mint or chocolate mint, I would so put that right on top. But it's a little early yet. But look at how beautiful that is for a dessert. That is nice and it's healthy and it's light. Perfect, perfect way to end a meal like this. So when we come back, we're going to serve our shawarma. Wait until you see this all together. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. Look at our chicken shawarmas that are grilled. And look at the grill marks that we got. And I want to show you what I used. If you don't have access or it's a rainy day, you want to do it in your kitchen. This is just a grill pan that I use. This is wonderful. And you know why I love this? because it's reversible. So you can do a flat grill on one side and do pancakes. And look at the beautiful grill marks that we got on this. So get yourself some good kitchen tools. And remember, I always say, you can't, build, you can't build a house without the right tools. You can't cook without the right tools either. So um, that's my well-loved and well-used grill pan. And this is, look at our beautiful eggplant that we chied, and we're going to serve it at room temperature. And remember our marinated, I want you to be able to see how this marinated. Just before I top it, I always mix it well to get all the vinegar and garlic infused olive oil. And I'm just going to spoon this over the top of our beautiful grilled eggplant. And remember, we didn't season the eggplant because we put salt on it to bring out all the moisture in the eggplant. So in the feta cheese is very salty as well. You know, sometimes if you have a real dry, this is a very, uh, it's a pressed feta cheese and it's very dry. You can even brush the feta cheese with olive oil and put it on the grill. It's fabulous. And then what's really fun, see all my little accoutrements here. These are uh, pepidus. They come in a jar. And remember we talk about these. They're spicy. So make sure, unless you're like really spicy, get the mild ones. But they're a marinated little red pepper. And I like to do this for color on top. And then we have our beautiful grilled lemons. So I'll do that. And our red onions that we do with a little bit of sugar and water, just so they're not real, real strong. And just a few. And you can even leave, the, leave this on the side and people can help themselves. In fact, I use this on the chicken shawarmas as well because it's so good. And these are pepperoncini, which are pickled light green peppers. They have a little bit of heat to them, but not hot. And I love these. These come in a jar too, so you always have them in the refrigerator for salads. You always see these at a salad bar. And they're called pepperoncini. And just spread those out. And then I like to leave this here in case people want to add more onto the tops. But this is our beautiful grilled eggplant. Everybody can add some lemon to the top if you'd like. That is, oh, all toasty. And we're going to put that there. Oh, this is a great barbecue idea. And it's not difficult to do. So we, I'm going to take, I'm going to um, arrange this for you. I have some shredded iceberg lettuce. I've also done this with fresh spinach. It's a beautiful accompaniment to this. And we're going to put that in there. We're going to take it. Beautiful. Look at how the gr it's grilled and toasty. And remember, we put olive oil in the mixture, in the shawarma mixture, so that the chicken is not going to be dry. So we're going to take our tzatziki. And you can put that right in the middle of the platter. And we're going to put this wonderful cucumber and garlic and dill and a little bit of yogurt. Put that over the top and again you can add any of these accompaniments on top if you'd like but i'm you know what i'm just gonna put a little red pepper on the top and plate that look at how beautiful that is 
and the grilled eggplant along the side. We chopped our little desserts with a cherry for color. And all the fruits of the season, make sure you put grapes and melons. Melons just add a great depth with some lime juice, lime zest, a little taste of honey and oil to carry it all through. Just a light coating and that's our beautiful uh, fruit dessert spread as well. So I want to thank you all for watching, for your emails. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know. And remember, as the weather gets shawarmer, warmer, try grilling some shawarma. <laughs> thank you for watching, and may the fork be with you.